we could have, or if you could have any kind of car, what would it be? <laughs> how did you know? <laughs> you know how much this costs? $400,000. That's why it's not sitting out in the parking lot out there. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, the, my, uh, my budget can't handle another insurance rate hike. And then you got the speeding tickets. Um, um, also traffic. Now, there's uh, some figures. This costs $518 billion globally. Um, there's also, it causes 1.3 million deaths per year. Well, <laughs> accidents globally. <laughs> so, uh, ownership aside, although I would still like to rent this exotic machine and race it down the Audubon at its top speed of 205 miles per hour, how do we differentiate between recreational driving and the, uh, making the leap into the next global transportation system? If we all thought about it, we would probably agree, especially us in this room, that um, transportation is the master key to survival. Um, and in an urbanized, modern world, a new, faster, and more efficient mode of transportation is necessary to achieving an environmentally sustainable and thriving economy, one that is independent of diminishing fossil energy. History has shown us that um, every quantum transportation advance doubles the standard of living. Um, the steamboats and trains displaced muscle power in the 1800s. Cars and aircraft became more popular in the 1900s because they offered more value uh, for less cost. Um, unfortunately, most modes of transportation are burning fossil fuels um, faster than we can dig them out of the earth. So how does nature do it? Oh, that's why we think it's time for a new paradigm shift, by the way. <laughs> uh, so, if we observe the perpetual motion of the universe, we see that the Earth orbits the Sun at 67,000 miles per hour. Um, the Sun orbits the Milky Way at 186,000 miles per hour, which means the average human travels 310 billion miles in a 70-year life without burning one drop of gas. <laughs> so if we're spinning around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour, why is it that we don't look like this? <laughs> uh, that's because we are cruising through space at a steady velocity. The only time you feel g-force is when there is a change in direction or speed. For example, when you take off in a space shuttle, the g-force increases to about three g's. Uh, one g is similar to what you would feel in a nice uh, sports car. Um, and one g is also the most that you will th uh, feel in ET3. I see some blank looks. Uh, what is ET3? ET3 stands for Evacuated Tube Transport Technologies. It's literally space travel on Earth. It's a global transportation system that is environmentally friendly, low cost, secure, silent, fast, and safe. So if you take um, some aspects of maglev technology, wrap it in a five foot diameter tube, and you pump out the air, you are left with airless, friction free conditions. The same conditions that are necessary for space travel on Earth. ET3's vision is to build a series of networks that operate at 200 to 620 miles per hour domestically, uh, eventually being networked internationally at 4,000 miles per hour. Uh, <laughs> um, at these speeds, you could commute from Los Angeles to New York in 45 minutes. You can go from New York, cross the Bering Strait, over to Beijing, China, in two hours. So, 
while maglev uh, technology has been currently used for over 50 years in J uh, J uh, Japan and Germany, um, I find it unbelievably uh, ridiculous that America is still using 100-year-old diesel engine locomotives. Why is that? What is stopping us from catching up with current technology and doubling the standard of living once again? Well, uh, most of the objections that we get are uh, what we like to call the three T's. Tyrants, terrorists, and toilets. Some say tyrants of all kinds will try to stop us because ET3 threatens the status quo. We believe that the status quo will actually uh, profit quite immensely through the addition of more trade routes, which are far more uh, efficient and lucrative than any of the traditional methods used today. Um, others have a hard time believing us when, they say, uh, when we say that um, ET3 will be less prone to terrorism. Um, for example, all the global routes are mostly underground, so that's not a problem. Um, the domestic routes will be less prone to sabotage because um, the same amount of people that are targeted in buildings, trains, and, um, and uh, planes today would be spread out over 30 miles in uh, ET3 because there's only six people per capsule. Um, but the biggest issue on people's minds seems to be toilets. Unlike uh, planes with cramp uh, or with long lines queued up to use the cramp facilities, um, ET3 capsules can be independently directed to the nearest um, access portal, which is never more than 15 minutes away. So it's kind of like when you're on a road trip with your family and somebody needs to use the restroom, you just get off at the nearest exit and go to um, gas station or rest stop, unless you have a, a toilet in your car. <laughs> uh, most of the other um, misconceptions and objections are of a technical nature, which can be easily overcome with current off-the-shelf proven technology. Um, so let's get into some of the technical specifications real briefly. Um, the uh, pressurized ET3 capsules weigh only 400 pounds empty. They can hold up to six people or... Um, 800 pounds, it's pretty standard for today's vehicles. Uh, the cargo capsules can hold three pallets of cargo up to 900 pounds, um, including liquids, gases, grain, etc. But one of the coolest things about this technology is the automation. Um, today's uh, technology allows this communication router to route uh, or to switch millions, uh, m millions amounts of data, uh, way more than millions of uh, human operators possibly could. And like communication, transportation is on the verge of automation. What about the cost of building it? Well, uh, Henry Ford had to aggregate what would now be billions of dollars to uh, build a whole series of factories to do everything from process ore and iron, um, <coughs> fabricate metal, uh, steel and sheet metal parts, uh, building engines, transmission, axles, wheels, brakes, etc. <clears throat> Instead of those serial processes that added many years and expense, ET3 can use technology that already exists. Uh, for example, um, billions have already been spent or the invested in uh, automated pipeline production. Uh, the Department of Transportation says there are 2.1 million miles of uh, pipeline in, in the United States. Vacuum technology is uh, mature. Um, this LIGO observatory has uh, 51 kilometers of welds. It's evacuated to a million times stronger vacuum than what's required for ET3. And upon testing, after two years of operation, it had no measurable leaks. Um, electric motors and generators are also well understood. If you get a chance to ride one of these LEM roller coasters like the Superman ride, Hang on, because it offers acceleration rates up to four times that of ET3. So, one of the cool ways that we're going to be traveling in the future, you pull out your smartphone, you launch the transportation app, and select your destination. I want to go from my current location to the Colosseum in Rome. Uh, five minutes later, an or a, a automated car pulls up, picks you up, 
takes you to the nearest access portal. And um, within three hours, you're goofing off in Italy. <laughs> what about reliability and safety? If we can control the conditions of the travel, such as uh, icy roads, uh, potential for conflict with cyclists, pedestrians, we can, make, uh, we can make travel much safer than it is today. Anybody here want to keep dealing with the following? Car payments, insurance, routine maintenance, costly repairs, speeding tickets, searching for a parking spot, parking tickets, road rage, gas prices, flat tires, vandalism, locking your keys in the car, traffic accidents, etc. <laughs> Not this guy. No. <laughs> so is ET3 a viable uh, option today, a viable solution today? Yes, it is. <laughs> So what's next? Well, it's been a pretty exciting year at ET3. We've gotten uh, a lot of major ex uh, exposure in the mainstream news. A lot of that's thanks to Elon Musk, that Danette mentioned, uh, and the media frenzy that surrounded his Hyperloop announcement earlier in August. Uh, but even more exciting than that, um, we are on target to build a three-mile test track at the end of this year. <laughs> With a planned opening to the public, in 2016. So until then, uh, you can learn more about us at et3.com and et3.net. Uh, share your ideas in the user forums. And um, be sure and check us out on the uh, social networks. And I want to thank you for this opportunity to introduce you to the next quantum leap in transportation. Thank you.